What's up, babes? It's Carlisa Victoria back with another video. If you're new here, hi, welcome to my channel. If you've already been subscribed, thanks for coming back. So look, y'all, it is a little bit later, like much later. I'm standing up right here in some better lighting than I just was in. I'm actually still cleaning up. I know that the camera might look a little distorted. I'm looking at it right now, and it kind of does make me look a little distorted. But if you could bear with me, we could just get through this video. I wanted to talk about starting over, what that means for me, what that's looking like as far as my goals and things like that, where I'm at, how I'm feeling. So today was another long day. These last few videos that I've made since I've returned, you would think that it would be like, hi guys, I'm back, what's good? But literally I came back and it was just like, hi guys, what's up, I'm good. But it's also just letting you guys know that I've been going through a very, 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 very rough season of my life. And I definitely believe that when you are close to a breakthrough, you go through the most. When God has something aligned for you, something in store for you, you are going to go through the most to get to that blessing, to get to that thing. So in a way, it's like very stressful, but in, on the other, in a, on another like level or in another token, it's a blessing no matter how you look at it. Whatever God's doing, I don't want him to stop until he's complete with his work. I'm being chiseled. I am being stretched. I am just being pulling left and right, tug of war, tings in your stomach. That type of feeling that you get when you feel like you are being stretched, when you're having those cramps every month, or maybe for women who have kids, maybe think about when your belly is expanding with a child or something like that. The way that you are being stretched, the way that you are being chiseled to bring in something great, just like a mother literally carries a baby for nine months and her body is stretched 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 until it is time to give birth to that beautiful little boy or that beautiful little girl it's the same thing that's happening in your life you are being stretched you are being pushed to the point where god knows that you're going to survive what you're going through even though you might be looking at it like how am i going to push this baby out or how am i going to get through this circumstance the same way that you're sitting here wondering how and God already has an answer is the same way that you're going to be stretched in your business, stretched in your personal life, stretched just throughout everything. So even though I'm coming to you all and I'm just like, hey, look, I'm going through a whole bunch. I'm not making these videos for you guys to feel sympathy for me. I'm not making these videos for you guys to feel like, oh, let's pity her. I'm making these videos to let you know that I am human. I am real. I go through some of the same circumstances that you all go through. So just because you see a person who puts a camera up and talks to you all through the camera lens or talks to themselves and uploads something for you all to hear does not mean that we are not human just like you and we are not going through things. I am far from perfect. Every single day there's something I'm going through. You know what I mean? Every single day there's something you're going through. Your perspective is what's going to get you through what you're going through. So you can look at the glass half, half empty or you can look at the glass full. It's all in perspective. And what you choose to do with that perspective is going to ultimately de decide what's going to happen in your life. So starting over is not always a bad thing. Sometimes we think like, uh, I just got through the middle of a movie and I need to start over. Or I just got through a portion of a paper but I forgot where I started I have to start over starting over is not always bad oftentimes when you start over it gives you that ability to have a clean slate and it gives you the ability to see where was I going wrong when I was on this course what was it that I did that I could do better and overcome where I'm at so don't look at starting over as negative a negative thing you can start over as many times as you need to in your life. No one ever said that you only get one chance to start over in your life. No, if you need to start over every other day, every other week, every other month, baby, start over. Because who's going to judge you? And whoever is judging you, they need to get their stuff together. And that's probably why they're not moving forward in their life. Because they're so worried and preoccupied about you that they can't focus on the vision that God gave them. They can't focus on the things that they're supposed to be working on to expand. So I just don't know who's sitting there thinking like, geez, I've been working so hard. I'm not seeing the results that I want to see. I believe that I'm going to have to start over, but I'm not happy about it or I'm not feeling optimistic or I'm feeling very low. I'm feeling down. Whoever's feeling like that, I just want you to understand that whatever God has for you, he has for you. And I continue to keep saying this over and over and over and over because what is for you, no man can take. Whatever God has for you, it is for you, baby. It is for you, and don't you ever forget it. So that's literally where I'm at right now. I am going to push through what I'm going through. 
I'm going to continue to make the content. I'm going to let God chisel me. I'm going to be stretched left, right, up, down in every direction that it takes for God to get me back aligned. I want to be stretched. Growth is inevitable. You know what I mean? Like you or change is inevitable. Growth is optional. You know what I mean? You could choose to stay complacent and stay where you're at. But things are going to be changing, right? So you're going to have to make sure that you choose what is right for you and do that. Don't allow your circumstances to overcome you. If you're going through rough times right now, just know that God got you. I don't know what else to say other than God got you. I'm telling you guys, I've been going through a lot. So for me to be able to sit here and say, God got you, or to sit here and tell you that all things are going to work together for their good, and I'm in the midst of adversity, that tells you that my faith my faith is on chart. And I'm not saying that you won't have moments where you're not going to break down and cry. You're not going to have moments where you're going to question God on what he's doing and things like that. Because you're human, you're, you're going to do that. But in the end of the day, just keep the faith, keep pushing forward and understand that starting over sometimes is the best reward in it all. So I've chosen to start over with my mindset. I've chosen to start over with the things that could help me become a better person. I chose to start over with a new space. I moved from where I once lived. I downsized that I allowed myself to embrace a smaller space so that I can go ahead and focus on my mental. Sometimes more space is more chaos. Sometimes when you get down to the intimate small spaces and God forces you and pushes you back in a corner, it makes you think differently. It makes you move differently. When you got all that space around your house and God is trying to corner you, you're like, oh, let me go to the next room. Oh, let me go to the roof. Oh, let me go to the back room. Oh, let me go on the back porch. Let me go on the front porch, right? But when you put yourself in that little box, that's big enough for you to survive, but enough for God to push you against that corner and say, baby, whatever you're going through, I got you. Wherever you feel like it's inadequate, I'm adequate. Wherever you feel like I want to give up, I'm here. So in the end of the day, keep your faith high and don't be afraid to start over. I encourage you on that start over quest, reevaluate your finances, look at your expenses, see what can you cut out. What are the things that you can cut out where you can live without? For me, nails, toes, these types of things, these are not, these are not necessities. These are um, oftentimes, you know, wants or whatever. But for the professions that I'm in, I believe that having my nails, my toes, and looking put together goes with my profession. So it's a part of my uniform per se. So for me, those are priorities. For you, you might feel like, I really don't need my nails and toes done. I don't have to, you know, look up today. I'm okay. And I'm not saying that I can't go without these things. But for me, those are factored in as um, services that I believe are going to keep me, you know, afloat. When I'm doing something, I'm signing documents, I'm talking to people, I'm showing people things. And my nails is all bit up and not done. That is a reflection of my presentation as a person. So for me, I like to be upkept right i don't require a lot of maintenance but i like upkeep i do my own hair my nails my toes i probably can do these myself which i know i can it's just sometimes you're paying for the service of someone else to do it more than your more than the fact that you know how to do it you know what i mean so you're paying for the service the convenience also so in the end of the day don't you know Figure out what works for you, what's conducive for your growth, what's conducive for your business, and then go after that. But I will encourage you to eliminate, eradicate expenses that do not need to exist. When it comes to your car insurance, it comes to your home, mortgage, rent, whatever the case may be. When it comes to your phone bill, these are essential expenses. You know, they're fixed oftentimes, but they're still essential. So you want to make sure you're focusing on those core bills. You're taking care of your responsibilities. Don't don't neglect your responsibilities. Take care of your responsibilities. But the shopping sprees that are two, three thousand dollars every month and those things could be eliminated. You know, focus on building your brand. The expensive rent. If you have a mortgage, great. Look into 
keeping that credit up and getting that credit great so that you can go ahead and refinance in the future for a better interest rate. If you're renting, think about, do I really want to pay what I'm paying? Am I willing to sacrifice where I live for the long term of my business endeavors? Because for me, I can say yes, I am willing to have long term gains with short term sacrifices. I'm willing to do that. Yes, I like my luxury. Yes, I like my nice house. Yes, I like, you know, nice things. But I am willing to say, humble yourself, baby. Let's go from a three story to a one story. Let's go to a one bed. Let's go to small square footage. Let's go to something that got more land so your dogs can play. Let's go to something that makes sense, right? I've began to eradicate expenses that don't need to exist. Exist. I've began to decrease expenses that I have the option to get in front of and decrease. So whatever it is that you're doing, make sure that you're making it make sense. So start there with your expenses, then create your budget, create your financial portfolio of what you want to have as assets, properties, uh, maybe you wanna have stocks, bonds, you know, it's different things that you can be building your financial portfolio with by eliminating certain expenses that don't need to exist and decreasing expenses that you have that do not have to be skyrocketed. When you do that, you will see that you are able to move your mon money in different spaces that are going to grow your success and allow you to leverage. And if you are not familiar with like financial jargon, leverage is basically utilizing other means to be able to produce other means for example if you own a home you have equity in that house you take equity out of that house and you go ahead and put it into a down payment for a new house you are leveraging what you already have to expand for more so in the end of the day leverage make it make sense i'm not looking to be 65 and retiring baby i'm looking to have generational wealth built and for my kids kids to be set when i do have children for my um financials to be in order because i do know that we all are gonna go someday people don't like to talk about death but it's inevitable death to the flesh is inevitable we're out of here someday so you might as well set it up for the next generation to come by working hard and making it make sense now so that later your children will be able to follow a plan of success your children will be able to know oh my mama owned this brokerage oh my mama owned this property and then she's also, you know, given or will this to me so that way, that way when I'm grown, I can will something to my grandkids and my kids and my You have to create generational wealth. And if your family is not teaching that, because we not all being taught that, you go seek it out. You go be the person who break the chains in a family. You go be the chosen one who make, rises up from the ashes and make it happen. Maybe be Phoenix. Everybody who's great does not come from someone who's telling them, go do this, go do that, go do that. Some of us just figure it out because this is what we want to know for our own selves. It's not to say that we don't have smart people in our family who know some of these things or smart people in our family who aren't doing anything. But a lot of times, especially in the black families, black household, and, and don't knock me if you're not, this doesn't pertain to you. But a lot of times, some of these things are not taught. You know what I mean? And, um, you have more generations that go on to learn these things so that they can be able to produce it to their family. And I will clap and hand, head, hats off to a lot of successful black people now, because I will say, I remember a point in time where these weren't the conversations, but I see and hear that there are so many families and so many young people who are wanting to build generational wealth for their future. It makes me smile. So I'm not gonna say that is not happening in black households, and I'm going to say that it has increasingly gotten better for these conversations to be had for these young people to start building this type of mentality to build. You got to start with the mentality, right? You got to start with the belief. Then you will start to acquire the actual assets. You will start to acquire the actual um, things that we are talking about. So let it start in the mind. Believe that you can and you can. It all starts with belief. Do that and you can, but I will definitely challenge you to look over your expenses, eradicate, 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 eradicate what doesn't need to be there. Reduce what you can reduce. My office rent, my house rent. I reduce those by more than half, literally by more than half. For my home life, 
I reduced it and I literally have one third, one fourth of what I was paying one month is what I can get three to four months out of somewhere else or where I'm at. Where I was um, um, with my office, I'm spending probably 60% less now. It can be done. So make it happen. Don't make excuses, make adjustments, right? Those are going to be your very first things to start over and start over in a manner that's going to allow you to be successful. Do those things. I promise you, you're going to get relief when you don't have these overwhelming bills. You're going to get relief when you're able to allocate your funding, your money to different asset, different things that are going to create assets for you instead of liabilities. You are going to be so much happier when you see that saving is literally like a goal saving is something that i'm trying to see how much money i can save like i get happy about that you know what i mean instead of feeling like how much can i spend you know that you want success and you know that you've grown when you're really more so preoccupied with how much can i save than more than how much can i spend now don't get me wrong you can still have your nice things you can still go on vacations i cannot stand when people say oh successful people don't wear designer they don't go on vacation they don't wear bags that are three thousand four thousand dollars Successful people do what they want. That's why they're successful, right? You can have nice things because guess what? You might be into fashion and guess what another uh, successful person might have a problem with? Gambling. Or they may have a problem with drinking. Or they may have a problem with, you know, some type of something else, right? That Just because they're not buying designers and bags doesn't mean they're not putting that money into bad habits, Right? Or putting it into something else so don't compare two different things just because oh it looks nice it's fashion so yeah that's a problem because money could be if you want to look at that as a waste you can look at it as it's being poured out somewhere else for other people just focus on you for example people with my designers I can go sell a lot of my designer items and I'm gonna get what I paid for it or more because the markets that we're in and also the type of um assets that i have so when i look at my bags i look at some of my shoes those are stocks baby they hold their value they may lose some value in certain items and certain brands but for the most part they hold their value so to me if i could sell it and get that same amount back or more is worth me having it and even if i can't sometimes there's just items that I don't know, like items that I just want to have in my collection and I'm going to have for a long time. So that's what makes it valuable to me because I can have a bag for 10 years. If I would have bought cheapos, I would have been buying cheap bags every other week. But if I buy a quality bag, I can take this statement piece with me throughout all of my years. So make it make sense for you and stop judging other people for what they decide to do with their money. Stop telling people what they got to do with their money. Um, when it's your money, it's a different story. But when it's their money, let them do whatever, whatever they do as long as they don't involve you in the way that they're spending their money when they don't have their money. So that's the biggest things that I would say when you start over. Another thing that I would say is get quiet to yourself. Don't be around nobody for, you know, a little bit. Don't feel like you got to go out. Go sit down. Go journal. Clean your house. Clean your mentality. Clean your mindset. And just start to work toward the things that are going to push you into the direction that you need to be pushed to be successful right we're going through a lot of people are going through things you might be going through like dang i don't have the bill money man i'm going through a terrible divorce and i'm going through a terrible breakup relationship maybe i just lost a friend maybe you just experienced a death we're all going through things right but in the process of sadness find joy and I know that one will pass over another and one will overlap another. You know, like sadness will dismiss itself and joy will come in. But one thing that they won't do is they can't coexist. You can't be extremely full of pure joy and then be extremely full of sadness at the same time. They cannot coexist as like oil and water. They're not going to mix, right? So in the end of the day, you may simultaneously be striving to find ways to get back to your pure joy and happiness while eradicating that sadness but in the end of the day you'll get there it's not overnight but you'll get there but if you don't work toward the things that you are passionate about you don't work toward the things that you desire then that is when you're going to be stuck so every day that goes past set goals be intentional don't sit here and be like oh well i know i moved here to do x y and z and then you get to that place and you're not doing nothing you said because girl what are you doing 
um so i encourage you guys to just keep going you got this i know it seems difficult sometimes but god got you so stick to it to get through it i'll see you babes in the next video it's getting a little bit late i need to let the dogs out to go to the bathroom and i will see beautiful babes in the next video like comment share subscribe i do got to do a hair video soon this video is going to be a little bit fuzzy because it's looking a little bit distorted and fuzzy to me but as long as you got the message that's all that matters sis i'm gonna go ahead and upload it right now and just understand that it's okay to start over i love you guys so much thanks for supporting me i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna be striving to make sure that i'm uploading videos regularly even if i'm going through a lot i still want to be able to get on here and upload and talk to you about talk to you all so i'll see you beautiful babes in the next video let me go let your internet nephew and nieces out or a niece out and i'll see y'all the next one